What's up guys, this is Seville with another Marvel Legends action figure review. Today I'll be talking about the Infinity War version of Black Widow. I'm kind of breaking my usual pattern here because normally I would start a video with the unopened box the figure comes in first. However, I just happened to get this figure while I was in the middle of doing all the 10th anniversary reviews and I really just couldn't wait to open her. Because getting the Black Widow figure meant I could finally complete the Call of Obsidian Builder figure. And once I opened it to go ahead and get that torso piece out, I didn't see the need in really keeping the box and just went ahead and got her out too. And I have no regrets because this figure looks great so far. Here in just a minute, I'll show you a closer look at each of them. Just real quick before we get back to it, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and comment below. And if you want to see more from me, please subscribe and hit that notification bell. And now for a closer look, starting with Black Widow. The skin tone on her face is really pale on this figure. Uh, I'm noticing my lighting keeps kind of washing it out a little bit so you don't really see the right colors. This looks the most accurate right now, but that may change throughout the video as if I forget to tweak it and fix the lighting. When she was on the spinner earlier, I forgot to show that she does come with a pair of closed fist hands. She also has these little clips on her hips, which just rest in the holsters. Like there's really nothing holding them in. They're probably gonna get lost on her later. Back to her head though, I do think they've made a pretty big improvement on Scarlett Johansson's likeness. It is now much more true to life than it has been in the past, making it much easier to identify who she's supposed to be. Just for a quick comparison, this is one of the heads from the Winter Soldier version of Black Widow. Compared to the new one, this one loses all sense of being Scarlett Johansson. Therefore, the new head sculpt is definitely a vast improvement. Moving down the figure, there's a very large amount of textures and details sculpted into this figure. With intricate designs down her arms and legs, and even on the outer vest. I say outer because it's actually a separate piece altogether. You can see the seam on this side where it connects together. And just because I got curious, yes, the vest can totally come off. The only bad thing is now I've noticed there's this weird seam on her neck and chest area that I didn't notice before I removed the vest. And now that's clearly distracting, so I'm going to put the vest back on. With all that said, I'm going to go ahead and move on to the articulation. Her shoulders do spin all the way around, as well as move outward. Her elbows are only single jointed, but they can rotate. Her wrist can also rotate, and they have the up and down movement too. And she does also have rotation in the waist. Her legs have a decent range outward, but is somewhat lacking front to back. She does have rotation in the thighs, but the straps on her hips and such that connect down are a bit of a hindrance. The double knees work pretty well, but the ankles are a bit stiff. The only thing I can really get out of them is some rotation. Before I move on to Call of Obsidian, I'm going to do a quick size comparison with her main rival in the film, Proxima Midnight. Proxima was a very tall character in the movie, and that holds true in action figure form. But now, it's time to talk about the even larger Cole Obsidian Builder figure. To me, this is a solid example of what a good Builder figure should look like. Being that he's much larger than the main line, and full of high quality details as well. Building a larger character like this seems much more worth it than building a character like the Manus figure from the Guardians of the Galaxy. The detail on this figure is very impressive mostly throughout. It does start to lack a little bit down toward the ankles, but most of it is highly detailed, with the reptilian-like scales covering his entire body, clearly displaying a lot of time and effort put into the work. Even the armor pieces that he wears has a lot of nice details, like the layering and even some scratches and dents and dings from previous battles. The hammer doesn't look quite as good as the armor, but it's still not bad. The level of detail in this sculpt is probably higher than most of the recent Builder figures that Hasbro has put out. To me, he even looks better than the 10th anniversary Thanos. His articulation is pretty good too. His head does turn side to side, and his shoulders can spin all the way around. However, when moving back, the scales on top do kind of get in the way, so that range of motion is a bit limited. The armor on his right shoulder is a bit of a hindrance as well, 
but it can move up and down just a little bit to help with some poses. He does have full rotation on the biceps, but only the one elbow joint, which is also somewhat limited. The wrists do also have full rotation and a little bit of back and forth movement. The ab crunch moves up and down a little bit and has full rotation. On top of that, there's also a waist joint with full rotation. Moving down to the legs, the hips do have a decent range outward, but not so much front to back, mostly due to the armor skirting. He does have full rotation at the thigh, and the double knees work pretty well. And finally, he does have a full range of motion in the ankles. Now, it's time to move through my guidelines for a complete and fair review. Both of these figures feature brand new sculpts that are fully detailed and accurate to the characters. They are in scale with the line and do include their own accessories. Unfortunately, much like most of Hasbro female figures, Black Widow does not have 24 inch of articulation. However, Call of Obsidian does. Neither figure seems too fragile, which is good because both figures have trouble balancing. I do think $20 is fair for their standard Marvel Legends, but they still have been pretty hard to come by for a while. They have been on some online stores, but most brick stores are just now starting to see the wave. Which brings both of these figures to a 4 star rating, meaning they are awesome and worth owning for casual fans. So I can definitely recommend adding these figures to your MCU collection. If you like this review and you have not already subscribed, please do so. That way, you'll be notified when I do my next review featuring the NECA Ultimate Fugitive Predator based on the new film. I'll actually be on my way to see it as soon as I finish this video. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see y'all next time.